next question goes to Mr. Donovan first. What do you think the federal government should do to address climate change? Well, um, contrary to what um, certain Republican leaders say, there is a real uh, need to address our environment and the effect of um, warming of our, our earth. So um, the main culprit appears to be um, carbon emissions. So we need to figure out ways to reduce that. Uh, there are, um, as I talked about earlier, uh, conservation is one way. Rather than just producing more and more fuel, is this uh, reducing the amount of fuel. Yeah. Uh, we need to have strict standards. We need to reduce uh, the emissions from cars. We certainly have invested in our auto industry, and we should uh, continue to work with our auto industry to reduce uh, those emissions. We also have to work on, as I mentioned, mass transit. I was, uh, I, uh, I originally grew up in the Philadelphia area. I've been here for over 30 some years, so I'm, I'm new here. Um, but I was struck by our lack of mass transit. And in my town, Meriden, we have a train track that runs right through the center right along 91. How many people have been stuck on 91 sometime in their life? It's a traffic jam, and that's polluting our air. I was able to work with our congressional delegation, work with President Obama, Barack Obama, and work with Governor Jody Rell, and bring in over $400 million to create a um, mass transit commuter rail between New Haven and Springfield that goes through part of the fifth CD. That's going to save energy. That's going to reduce our emissions. That's something we can do. There's other parts of our state which also have that possibility in terms of a high-speed rail commuter rail, whether it's the Danbury or Waterbury. Making a, uh, a beeline from the uh, East Coast all the way up to Boston, coming through our area and help develop our communities as well. Mass transit should be a bigger, bigger, bigger priority than it is now. That will reduce our, our carbon emissions tremendously. And I also uh, believe I support uh, provisions uh, to reduce, to create incentives uh, for uh, reducing carbon emissions in the business world as well. Offer incentives. Uh, other countries, uh, Canada particularly, is looking at a carbon tax, which says, you know, if you use so much money, we will take that dollars and tax the use of carbon, carbon emissions and put that back into our economy. That's something worth looking at. There's a way of saying, let's reduce our, our, our emissions. Because there's nothing like an incentive of uh, costing more money for people to take action to put things into place. I think we have to put that, that incentive out there to business saying, hey, you know what? If you, if you waste too much, if you uh, let your energy go out the window, if you create too much emissions, there's going to be a penalty to pay. And guess what? They'll move into position and be innovative and figure out ways to reduce it. Those are just some of the ideas, but we need to reduce it. We know it's happening, uh, and it's a real threat to our future generations. Mr. Roberti. We need to take very seriously the climate change that is happening. We need to realize that global warming is going on, and we need to realize that we, as a people, we are responsible for it. We have to take ownership uh, of what it is we've done to our world. We're, we've gotten away from being stewards of this universe, of this, of this world and move towards trying to mine it for profit. Um, you know, I uh, live in Kent near the Housatonic River, and the Housatonic River is polluted. It's polluted because GE has a plant of a uh, state that has that which dumping all sorts of toxins into the river. Um, you know, so what are some of the things we can do to prevent these uh, storm stuff, uh, prevent this stuff? Uh, first and foremost, uh, certainly cap and trade legislation for pollutants that are being let out in the air and carbon, which by the way was originally Republicans' idea is a compromise, and yet the ball just gets moved forward. And uh, you know, every time we try to meet them in the middle, we as Democrats have to stand up and fight these battles and make sure that we can pass through serious cap and trade legislation like what passed the House a few years ago, but then stalled in the Senate thanks to a filibuster. We also need to focus on uh, our mass transit, we need to focus on getting the more energy efficient and more environmentally friendly uh, ways of doing business and moving people cleaning up businesses, which also creates jobs because if you're offering you know, a manufacturing business to become weed certified, 
uh, by doing so, uh, you'll create manufacturing jobs and installation jobs. If we invest in our infrastructure, I worked on a project called the Blueprint America, my professional career, and we looked at the entire nation's infrastructure and realized that there's $2.2 trillion worth of work that needs to be done. It's crumbling left and right. And just like FDR uh, got us out of the last uh, big mess we were in uh, economically, the last great depression, recession, uh, by building towards the future, which was cars and automobiles, therefore, you know, fixing our highways and building the highway system, actually, fixing bridges and tunnels. We need to do the same, but we need to do it with an environmental world. And that means high speed rail. It means increasing passenger rail in general. It means cleaning up our schools and our buildings. And we can do this in a way that is a great benefit to us on so many levels. We can do this by putting people work, we can do this by helping our environment in the future. And I'll leave with this point. The Constitution of the United States of America is considered the greatest idea, right? And that's what we do. It's America's best idea. I also worked on a film called National Parks America's Best Idea. And I want to talk about that last bit. It was for Ken Burns' PBS film. It was a marathon for those of you who know that Ken Burns, but it was a beautiful trip. The reason that it was named America's best idea is because since the Constitution, the greatest idea we have was to look at our Earth and realize that it is bigger than us, to realize that we are here because of its life-sustaining principles. And so the concept of setting aside our environment for our children and our children's children beyond the Constitution that created this free nation is was and will always be our best idea. And it's amazing that as we face the problems we face today, climate change, energy crises, and the need for the grower economy to pull people back to work. We can actually tackle these at once with clever, smart, common sense legislation. And uh, these are the things that I will certainly fight for if I have the opportunity to be certified in each other. Somebody who in law school in the 1980s said that the Natural Resources Defense Council. We served on the Energy and Technology Committee in the legislature. I got the support of the co-chairs of the Environment Committee in the legislature and support from across the country from energy and environmental leaders who are desperately concerned about this issue. If you, I was talking with someone in Travelers Insurance a month ago, and they told me, and this is how climate change is real, and there may be climate change deniers in Washington, but I'll tell you, the business community knows it's real because the claims that they have processed for travelers in the last year were 241,000 claims. The year of Katrina, which was their last time, it was 100,000 claims. So we may have climate change deniers in the Republican caucus in the House of Representatives, but believe me, folks, it's real. And I think that growing reality for American businesses businesses and companies and countries around the world is going to be needing a unified effort. It cannot be the U.S. alone. Because frankly, if China and India get it wrong, we're all sunk. Those little island nations, they're gone because the sea level is going to rise. So this is a time we're going to need bold leadership by the United States. We're going to need informed, powerful voices in Washington and understand it's not an American problem. This is a worldwide problem. And we cannot afford to export our energy intensive lifestyle to the world. We have to help set that standard for responsible energy usage, for responsible technologies, for transportation that uses very little energy, for research and development. One of the worst things the Republican Congress has done is cut funds for research and development. This is critical to us because we don't have a lot of time, frankly. We don't have a lot of time to make change. And we have got to get China and India off of the high sulfur coal. We have got to move to new technology resources. And so it's great to have talking points, but we're going to need people at the table who understand when hydrofracking comes on board, what does that mean for us? When we are looking at the XL pipeline, what does that mean if the wood sands are allowed to liberate all of their carbon into the atmosphere? These are complicated issues. And we're going to need responsible people at the table who cannot be bought by special interests, who have strong voices, who know that they will stand up and do what's right for their district and their country. Thank you.
given how close we are to the end of the debate, I'm not going to do the bubble on this question. I am just going to go to the next question, um, which will go to Mr. Roberta first. 